hi friends this is ishan ali i am student and uh, we are going to give about we are going to give a lecture about the cardiovascular system mainly the anatomy of the cardiovascular system it is our first lecture about uh, cardiovascular system so let's go through it first of all in this lecture we will discuss about the anatomy of anatomy of cardiovascular system the cardiovascular system mainly including the structure of aorta after that the branches of aorta branches of aorta in after death the branches of branches branches of subclavian artery so first we will discuss about the aorta which mainly comprises of ascending aorta descending aorta and the arch of aorta as we can see here this is the structure of the heart and this is the part mean ascending aorta ascending aorta and this portion is called arch of aorta arch of aorta and here is going downward this is descending aorta descending aorta and the arteries which provide blood supply to the heart itself they are called coronary coronary arteries mainly these arteries are originated from the ascending uh, part of the ascending aorta so these are coronary arteries coronary arteries so first we will discuss about the branch of branches which are mainly originating from the arch of aorta so it for this purpose i will draw arch of aorta separately for example this is the arch of aorta for example this is the arch of aorta the arch of aorta mainly gives three main branches three main trunks the first brown branch that is left subclavian artery after this the left common carotid artery and after that the third branch that is brachiocephalic artery the brachiocephalic artery further gives a branch which we call as right carotid common carotid artery so i will write here this is left common carotid artery this is so this is left subclavian artery left common carotid artery and this is the branch 
which bifurc which originate by the bifurcation of the brachiocephalic artery that is right right common carotid artery and this branch is right subclavian And this is the main aorta. So first of all, we will discuss about uh, the branches and which are originating from the subclavian arteries. That is the left subclavian artery and uh, right subclavian artery. And other we will discuss. Later about the circle of villus, which mainly formed by the vertebral arteries originating from the subclavian arteries and left and right subclavian arteries. So I am going to draw only about only the subclavian artery. This is the common carotid artery and make it again and again so you can easily understand this is brachiocephalic trunk Is brachiocephalic trunk brachiocephalic trunk yet every artery that is the right left subclavian artery the left common carotid artery the brachiocephalic artery the right yeah, common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery every artery has its own many many branches so all uh, we will discuss about the all of the arteries and all the branches which are originating from this different type of the trunk we will discuss later first we have to discuss about the arteries which originated from the right subclavian artery and left subclavian artery which form a very important circle in our brain which compensate the blood pressure which compensate the flow of the blood to the whole region of our brain so for this purpose we will discuss about the branch which mainly originate from the subclavian artery that is the vertebral artery which originated from here for example i will make it little bit so this is the vertebral artery originating from the subclavian artery. If you look at the both arteries, that both trunks, subclavian, right and left subclavian trunk give rise the same artery. So this is called as vertebral artery. Vertebral artery. Vertebral artery. This is also vertebral artery. So the vertebral arteries which originating from the subclavian artery they move upward on the both side of our neck. So at the sinus, example this is the sinus. This is the position of the sinus where the common carotid arteries that is left and right common carotid artery bifurcate into two, further two. Further two, there is the internal, this is the internal common, common internal carotid artery and this is the external carotid artery. This is also external 
RG. But we will not discuss about the common external and internal common carotid arteries here. We are, we are going to mainly focus on the vertebral arteries and the circle of villus which are formed by the vertebral arteries. Combination of these and the inter, in, in the, or the internal common carotid artery we will discuss. So at the sinuses, this is called carotid sinus. Carotid. Sinus. sinus. So at the point here, the carotid sinus, the vertebral artery starts moving toward inside. This is also moved toward in the side. And after this, it cross on the back side of the common carotid arteries it's come out and starts moving upward start moving upward this is the common carotid artery and these are the vertebral arteries which are moving toward first upward direction and to the interior inner side and the medial side and at the point of the common carotid sinus they move back to the back of the common carotid sinuses and they starts to moving upward toward our brain so after they, they cross the pontomedullary junction they start to combine and form a single artery so here we will discuss from here to up I am making the only the common carotid arteries, so craving artery and the vertebral artery, separate, so you can easily understand. For example, this is our vertebral artery. Vertebral arteries mainly originating from subclavian arteries. This is the subclavian artery. For example, this is the subclavian artery. So, at the sinuses, after the back of the sinus, it starts moving upward direction. Upward direction. These are the vertebral arteries which are moving upward. So. This is our, this is our vertebral vertebral, vertebral arteries, and at the pontomedullary junction, they united and fused together, and form a common artery, and starts moving upward. So now they are not called as vertebral artery. They are called as basilar arteries. So I will write the name here. This is the vertebral artery. Vertebral artery. And this is basilar artery. Basilar artery. So where they Fused together, this is the region of our medulla and pons. So this region is called pontomedullary junction. They by they once are they united and fused together to form a basilary artery. And this is the point and this is the position or this is the place where the medulla oblongata and the pons they are uniting each other. They are combining each other. So it's this position we are called as pontomedullary junction. Onto medullary junction. The pontomedullary junction. After this, 
the vertebral artery starts moving upward and give rise to further branches for example the first branch which originate from the ponto medullary region where the vertebral artery is united and form the basilar artery is that is from here the branch is this is the branch of the arteries which rise at this position this position they are called this is called what we call pike pike for example pi ka what is pica? It is posterior, inferior, cerebellar artery. It is posterior, inferior, cerebellar artery. So, from the name we can suggest that this artery mainly providing blood supply to the cerebellar region the inferior portion of cerebellar so these are giving branches to inferior side of the cerebellar cerebellum cerebellum and here the other main point is that the same artery this is the pica also giving branches few branches to the medulla oblongata it is the medial portion of medulla oblongata these are the arteries which are going towards the medial side of lateral for example the lateral side of the medulla oblongata after this in another type of the branches which mainly originated from the basilar artery that is Aika 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 that is anterior inferior cerebellar artery this is the second artery which is providing blood supply to the cerebellar cerebellar cerebellum of our brain so these are the two main branches which are providing the blood supply to our cerebellum so this is that is anterior inferior cerebellar artery so after this a long branch which originate from the basilar artery which we call as labyrinthine artery this is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery which providing blood supply to the cerebellar region and also it provided few branches to the pontine region for example the pontine branch after this what happened after this another artery which originate from here and travels a long distance it travel a long distance and reach to the our auditory system auditory systems that is the ears and this artery provide it blood supply to our ears inner ear so they are called labyrinthine arteries Labi when time artery. So they are called labyrinthine. Sorry, my writing is not uh, so good here, and therefore it is uh, a bit difficult for you to understand. Like, but I am saying that it is labyrinthine arteries. It is providing blood supply to our ear, 
and this is anterior inferior cerebellar artery and posterior inferior cerebral arteries. These two arteries are providing blood supply to the cerebellar region and these and mainly to these two arteries also providing blood supply to the lateral side of the medulla oblongata and lateral side of the bones uh, of the, our brain stem. So this is the system, this is the blood circulatory system which mainly provided blood to the different part of the region and it also including further branches which also provided blood supply to the cerebellar that is the upper portion of the blood that is upper portion of our brain that is the frontal lobe the temporal lobe and other uh, uh, parts of the brain so and the other artery which mainly uh, originate from here that is the smaller branches which providing blood supply to the bones so they are called as pontine arteries these are called pontine arteries Pont Pontine artery. This is the pontine artery, which provided blood supply to the bones. And after that, we uh, move upward uh, to the basilar artery. It's divided into two arteries on both sides. Long branches here and here. So these are the arteries which give branches to the cerebellar region. These are the arteries which are giving branches and blood supply to the cerebellar arteries but this is the artery which provided blood supply to the lateral or the, to the lateral side of our, our brain that is the cerebellar region. Cerebellar region. So these are called posterior cerebellar arteries. They are called posterior cere Barrel arteries, posterior cerebellar artery. So this is the whole uh, thing, a uh, whole uh, discussion about the uh, vertebral artery, the branches of the vertebral artery, the branch originating from the basilar artery. So we will discuss all the things here about the um, branch which mainly originated from the cerebellar artery and provide blood supply to our most important parts of the, our brain. That is, this is pica. So it is easy to remember that is pica and ica which are uh, together uh, somewhat uh, uh, they are together with each other so the posterior inferior cerebellar artery interior inferior cerebellar artery labyrinthine arteries the pontine arteries and the post posterior cerebellar artery so another type of the branches which mainly originated from here and blood provided blood supply to our spinal cord so they are called as posterior anterior anterior spinal arteries spinal arteries so they provide blood supply to the interior position of the interior side of our spinal cord so i think uh, it's sufficient it's uh, for in this video and uh, we will discuss uh, later in the next next video about the branches uh, which uh, originate from the in, uh, internal carotid arteries and uh, mixed with and form a communications between this system and form a circle of villas. So uh, thank you for watching this video.